Hey guys, I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, today we got a quick first impressions and unboxing video. Um, this morning a whole bunch of pot packages arrived at, uh, from USPS after being a few days late, but I'm thankful they're here. Finally have the black accent pieces for my CSR. It was red before, it's perfect now. Absolutely love it. From TC Paintball, we got a bunch of freak uh, normal insert case, which as you can kind of see here, the inserts fit nicely into this 3D printed canister. Uh, really helps consolidate the space and they're not running around in the bag roaming freely. And for the main attraction, we have another Mac Dev gun here. We have the Prime available for a quick comparison for this. So let's jump into it. This has like a, a softer material. This is like a older style uh, sort of fabric like covered case. Rigid hard still. We have bunch of barrel backs, same shift to barrel. Um, looks like there's maybe a insert missing. We got a barrel case or barrel sock, O-rings, manual, and the same O-ring or uh, Allen key set here. Looks like the case is kind of falling apart here. And is leaving strands of nylon fibers. No big deal though. Looks like this is supposed to be holding the the Allen keys here, which are not doing a very good job anymore. For the marker now, we have a Cyborg 6. Oh man, <laughs> this thing looks huge. Uh, the body looks absolutely massive and, and tall. Um, but it feels, it feels like the Prime. It feels better than a Prime to me. At least the, the front grip is nice and comfortable. The trigger is fairly similar. Oh, it feels good though. Oh, I miss, I miss some stack tube guns right here. It's kind of bringing me back to the LV. Different, very different, but uh, it's, it's sort of reminiscent of it. So the reason why the body of the, the Cyborg 6 is so large is um, they use ram sleeves within the body here, which contain like the valves um, for the, the poppet here. Uh, and also helps with that secondary sleeve. Uh, you know how people complain about wear through the, the body? This negates that wear and wears it on the, the replaceable sleeves rather than in the body itself. Um, and there's also quite a bit of complexity in here, which we can kind of get into later, uh, at a later date, with the, the way it's programmed, or um, sorry, the way the wire is routed and such. Uh, there's a lot of, this is one of uh, MacDev's first real attempts at doing their own electronics. So um, there's definitely some revisions that can be made with this, with this platform. Uh, so it will be kind of exciting to see if maybe they will. But yeah, I can't, I can't wait to actually get my hands uh, on the inside and start kind of seeing how they have it pieced together. But yeah, this marker feels fantastic in the hands. So you can, looks like we have a 685, 693, and a 689. Looks like we're missing probably like a 683 or something like that, or 681. Here, let's see what the, what the Prime has. We'll compare it to. Uh, we're missing a 677. Oh, wait, there's a 681 here. These markers are obviously a few years apart from each other, uh, and paint was different back then as it is now. And I would say that obviously the Prime is newer. So there's that nylon piece flying around. You guys can see this here. quite a bit taller of a marker, but it's it's really just 
what it is, a stack tube gun. It's literally one tube taller. Prime is definitely, definitely lighter. I don't know how, by how much, um, but I'm, it's not, this isn't ridiculous. The, the weight is nicely distributed. It feels great. Actually, the, the, it fits better in my hands than the LV. I always thought that the LVs were very comfortable, uh, but I thought the, the depth or the width of the, the grips were a little long for me personally. I'll kind of just throw this together real quick and so you can get a, a real look at it. I got to push this in further. Got the lock in place. So, one of my buddies on in the paintball community, we were talking about this marker, and literally that same day, his marker went back on sale from someone that he had just sold it to. And that day I bought it, or uh, I traded the DSR for this. So I'm very excited to uh, try out this platform. Uh, it's always been uh, something that's kind of intrigued me. Um, and it, right now it's not disappointing. It, it just feels really good in the hands. It looks beautiful. It's all blacked out, which is exactly the type of marker I like. Excuse me. And then we have... See if we can gas this up and see if there's any leaks in it. All right, so I uh, replaced the O-rings at the end of the tank here that I've been meaning to do. Uh, I guess they just decided to start leaking today, but it's all aired up, no issues here, no leaking, no nothing. Let's see if there's some juice in here. Sorry, Baxter. There's a little bit of bolt stick there. I don't know if you guys picked up on that, but it's firing now. So I'll get back to you guys after I spend some time with it and uh, play with it some more. I've now had the marker for about three weeks now, which has given me plenty of time to tinker and play around with it uh, and actually get some field time with it. Uh, and my initial uh, thoughts on this marker are all very positive. Uh, I, I can't say really enough good things about it as I'm actually quite impressed with uh, the package that was delivered uh, in like 2015 when this marker was really first launched. Um, now during this video I'll be making comparisons with it, the G6R, and the LV platform as those are the most recent stack to pop it markers that have come out recently. So the C6 has this beautiful little body to it uh, with this nice stepping sort of theme to it. Uh, it's a, definitely a heavier, chunkier gun to it uh, when you compare it to the competition, uh, but it is very well designed. The ergonomics are top notch on it. Um, if you guys are familiar with other Mac devs or uh, the drones uh, that came around, came out around this era, very similar. The rubber is identical. The front grips are pretty much identical. Um, the layout, very familiar, absolutely no complaints. Now, this marker does weigh in heavier than, it, than the, the competition, but it really carries the weight well because of the ergonomics. Uh, the shot quality, fantastic shot. And I have to say, it's literally between the G6R and the LV. I'm not saying that one is better than the other. I'm just saying, it feels the most in the middle between the two. Uh, the LV has that very soft, um, underwhelming shot uh, in terms of like 
any kind of drama to it. It is just, it just shoots. It's like a poof of uh, like a very soft thud and the, the ball's launched. Um, that's what makes LV so amazing. Uh, the G6R is super fast. It's like a tack driver. Uh, the shot it ends as quickly as it started. The Cyborg 6, like I said, is r literally right in the middle. Uh, I don't know if you're going to be making... I don't know if it's going to be winning over a lot of people, but it definitely won't be scaring away anyone. Uh, as it, it just doesn't do anything wrong. So what makes this marker so unique compared to the competition? So given that the marker came out uh, more recently than the competition. It definitely has a lot of features that we look forward to uh, in the markers that we expect now. Uh, you have wireless connection between the trigger frame and the body. Really easy to access uh, electronics. And something that really stands out on this marker is that it has a RAM sleeve, which carries the rammer and the poppet valve itself, which makes it incredibly easy to service and to just access and maintain. Um, another interesting feature that it has is it has two transducers, uh, one that monitors the low pressure and one that monitors the HPR. So once you go through the menu, it will tell you uh, exactly what your pressures are. Now, there's a, a disclaimer on that or a caveat. They will eventually fail. Um, the LPR transducer, when they first came out, I should say, uh, they, they failed relatively quick. Since then, MacDev has revised the board uh, with these little black covers that cover the sensors to uh, prolong their life a little bit. Um, the HPR sensor on my marker is completely shot. Now, that is because in the HPR, uh, since it's higher pressure compared to lower, uh, the sensors can't handle the pulsing that's, uh, that is acting on the sensors, so they just eventually fail. Um, but that's one of those newer features, one of those nice features that are nice to see in a modern paintball marker, uh, something that is completely void from the G6R and the LV, which require a completely separate uh, pressure tester. Now. Those are more reliable than the C6, but that's just what it is. All right, I don't know if there's much else to say about this marker, uh, aside from if you see one, pick one up. Uh, I think it's a great value for what it is. I think it's a fantastic milestone in MacDev's uh, lineup of markers. Uh, hopefully, we can only hope that MacDev will develop a C7 eventually, uh, but in the meantime, if you see someone at the field, give it a try. Try to shoot it. If you see one online, try to buy it. I, I highly recommend it right now. Uh, you can still find plenty of spares for this on MacDev's page. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching guys. If you guys have any questions, uh, please leave them down below. You know the drill. And thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.